Hello everyone, this is Brian. Welcome back to Reusable Space Program. Well, it's been about a month since I've recorded, and uh, some good reasons for that. I was feeling a little burned out by Kerbal Space Program. I've been playing this game almost uh, exclusively for about a year and a half, and um, you know, it's kind of feeling a little down on all the troubleshooting I've been having to do lately and all that stuff, but I'm back. And I've got something interesting going on tonight. Uh, first, I'll do a little recap. Um, then I'll do a launch and talk about the launch while I launch it. So, in the last mission, I positioned a satellite in a uh, Molnia orbit. It's an orbit that goes way out almost to the edge of uh, Kerbin's sphere of influence and back down again. While well, it's way up in this vicinity here, it spends a lot of time up there. So it's a really good position to send a radio signal clear across the solar system and not get blocked by anything. Uh, after that recording, I did an identical one to put one in the south orbit, and these are opposite one another. So as one swings by close, the other one is way down here. And uh, that way I have always have one of them that is in line of sight of other bodies out there. Dawn here at the KSC, I've got the rocket out there on the launch pad, and uh, first I installed a new mod, thanks to a comment left by Christian Bastidas. Um, it always bugged me that you could hear rocket engines in space in KSC, and so uh, he told me about uh, several mods, most of which I knew about, but one I didn't, and one I had actually looked for and not found, called Audio Muffler. So. This rocket's going to sound a little bit different as it goes up. Um, as it leaves the atmosphere, the sound is going to change and going to taper off and fade away until there's nothing. Okay, here we are. This is a five meter booster, five meter second stage, and a three and three quarter meter payload. What this payload is going to do, this is a interplanetary transfer stage for transferring cargoes uh, out of the Kerbin system. It'll accelerate the cargo up to speed, detach it, and then return back to Kerbin's orbit to be refueled and to go again. Uh, it's a heavy payload, it's about 80 tons, it's got four nuclear engines on it, um, and it's fully loaded and ready to go. Um, and this, there's about five new things kind of showcasing here with this uh, launcher. One is that I'm starting to edit my own parts. Um, I'll mention a little bit more why uh, in a little bit. And um, the interplanetary stage sitting up in orbit's number two. The third one, is, you've seen this before, I'm gonna land the first stage booster. And then the other two, um, you'll see in a moment. Let's get this thing started. First of all, I've noticed that I can literally blow up the launch pad by just by igniting these engines. So I gotta do this kind of carefully here. Okay, here we go.
This part's a little bit tricky. I don't want to get too far away from the KSC here before I activate my larger antenna. However, if I do too low in the atmosphere, it will just fall right off. So the fact I'm seeing some heating effects here is a little bit concerning. Though the temperature is um, dropping off rapidly. All right, I should probably go ahead and do this. So while I'm waiting for this to coast up here and circular, circularize, um, probably worth talking about this thing a little bit. So this is the booster right here. It's going to be left up in orbit. 2.5 meter docking ring there. Uh, of course, it's got all of its own comms, engines, etc. cetera. Um, Monopropellant, uh, probe core, fuel tank, structural element, uh, nuclear engines, etc. These are highly fuel efficient. Um, I can't really in good conscience send, you know, what is probably a whole bunch of plutonium back through the atmosphere. Um, so this will stay in orbit and get refueled up here. And notice it's kind of asymmetrical. Um, and the reason is because this is just big enough on its own um, to send a light payload, you know, on a trajectory that takes it all the way to uh, Jewel. Um, however, bigger payloads are going to require more than one of these. And so the idea is here is that this would lock on to um, a structural element on the large payload with these two docking nodes. Another one would be on the other side of the payload up here, and maybe even three and four if it's really big. And then once they detach, they can hook up together on each other and then return back into... Back to low orbit at, at, uh, at Kerbin. Um, so I had imagined that I had to engineer that, you know, what a heavy payload looked like. Then I had to engineer this, and I had to make sure that they all fit together properly, which took a long time. Um, I had to start editing some parts um, because of what's going to happen here next. And yeah, I guess I have some time to talk about this too. So about a year and a half ago, when I was um, kind of an intro Kerbal Space Program player or actually about a year ago was when I was doing this, I was putting orange fuel tanks into orbit around MUN, and I was realizing that they would make a great um, space station, space station, um, you know, living space, because after all, this is a pressure vessel. It's actually two of them. There's an oxygen tank up front and a, and a fuel tank down below. And especially if this were fueled by liquid oxygen and hydrogen, uh, then once it's in orbit and it's all used, um, why go through the trouble of bringing it back? Uh, all you got to do is open up the open up the um, the valves, let the hydrogen just boil off. Uh, it does not leave a residue. Um, or you could hook up a I think it's called a Sabatier reactor, which would turn the hydrogen oxygen back into water, which is great because um, you actually, of course, you need that up there. Um, and then you could convert this convert the fuel tank. And it seemed like a crazy idea, and I was very surprised to hear um, that NASA had already done something similar or close to it. Uh, Skylab, our first, NASA's first space station, launched, I believe, in 1974, was an upper stage of an Apollo uh, launch vehicle, Apollo rocket. And they had plans to convert it in orbit, but decided to do it on the ground uh, just because it was a little cheaper, easier, more, a little more predictable. Um, but that's what that was. So why not do that? So I edited this part um, so that it can actually hold, um, I think, four Kerbals on the inside. And it has a docking ring up here. It has a docking ring on the bottom. And each time I bring a payload up here, I'll just leave the second stage in orbit, and the space station will kind of grow over time. And I'll probably have to do some launches to bring um, specialized parts up here to, you know, do different docking nodes, etc. Um, uh, you know, power, you know, all that stuff. But the bulk of it will be these things. And that's actually, once it gets big enough, I could even, you know, do space tourism by bringing people up to these things. So. Once I circularize here, this will detach, and this engine with the tiny fuel tank here will return to the KSC. And that 
brings me to why I was making my own parts, because uh, when you start stacking procedural parts, it's really the best thing to do to create something like this. Um, and you make them super, super small, because all you need to do, after all, is return an engine. Uh, they just get weak, and they break apart, and they just can't handle big payloads and stuff. So the solutions seem to be to do that. And also that I like that it doesn't take you know a minute for the vehicle to load in the VAB or on the launch pad. Um, it's much faster when you do it this way. All right, we are approaching Appwapsis here. So let's kind of get this party started. I need pitch zero. Oh, I need to put the solar panels out. I completely forgot. Stage two solars. And I'll turn on the big booster solar panels, get all that going, and put that away, and I will toggle. There you go, I'll get these antennas folding out here. I've got two of them, one for kind of near curb and activity, and then a big dish here for when this goes on a long mission. Go ahead and activate this too. I can click on it. There we go. Activate. Go ahead and rename this also. And actually, I'll do that later. And I can see that this thing can push about 6 Gs right now. I'm going to cut that back a little bit. There, now it's down to 4. Snap that node right onto the apoapsis, and then drag it out. Oh, there it goes. There, that should be circular. Oh, I forgot to mention I put the real plume mod in there too, which uh, that's why this plume is, has changed here. This is what they look like when they're up in a vacuum and there's no atmosphere to pull all that flame down into a nice, uh, you know, laser focused plume. There we go. 104 by 108. That's pretty good. Um, just about the right, uh, right altitude for rendezvous because um, you can go much higher a little bit higher than that and you can get the higher time warp settings and there's enough space below it for something in a low orbit to um, to catch up to it okay next I will decouple the node of the engine thrust limit it back right now I can pull about 50 G's all by itself that's enough to make it explode so I cut that back to a reasonable level then I'm going to lower the orbit, do a do orbit burn, and then this will come in uh, headfirst on that heat shield in for a landing at the KSC.
All right, for those of you who are interested, I will take you through this launcher. Let's see, here we got. That like that. Leave that like that. All right, so <clears throat> payload here. Talked about this before. I'm going to kind of skip that. I'll just remove it and chuck it. <clears throat> so moving down the launcher, we have a TCS docking ring. This is by the Tau mod, and I think I resized it to fit um, a five meter payload. Then we've got the fairing. <clears throat> then I've got this fuel tank here. And which I have edited um, to get the content, the, the fuel. Um, actually, I don't think I changed the, the um, amount of fuel I could take, but I definitely did set it up so that I could have kerbals inside. And what I figure is that on the ground, this would be, of course, pre they would have like brackets on the inside that's pre-installed so they could move in various uh, modular furniture in there. That looks like that's my root part. So let's move down towards the bottom. We've got three of the um, SpaceX <clears throat> Raptor engines. And I've read the stats on Wikipedia and changed these to kind of match. That's uh, looking like a very cool engine. Um, closed cycle and some other innovations that put, it puts out a ton of power. Well, many tons of power. Um, we've got this here to protect it. I'll probably change this um, texture when I figure out how to make it a heat shielded texture. Um, we got the landing gear. We've got this part here is a structural part from the LLL mod and I edited it um, to create uh, realistic amounts of fuel in there, probe core, etc, battery, you know, kind of everything you need down there um, for to return the booster. And then here's a good old Rockamax 64 tank and I have sized it up to five meters.
interstage fairing here by procedural fairings. And then up in here, you've got the SpaceX upper landing gear. This is the Raptor uh, ver uh, vacuum engine. So it's the vacuum version of the same engines it had down there um, with its heat shielding wrapped around it. So trying to get these, it looks to me like you kind of have these squarish um, shapes here. Perfect to mount these landing gear on it, but unfortunately you can't. The model's kind of a little bit messed up. It wants to go inside there. And again, same service module as the on the lower tank. This one is has only a tiny bit of fuel in there because that's about all you need for to return that engine. Um, and the the SpaceX uh, solar panels as well. Get rid of that. And you have the heat shield here. Um, had the fuel ducting so that because heat shield won't inherently um, allow fuel to be transferred. And then here's the docking ring that allows this to be disconnected and. You know, it gives you a docking ring each side here, so I can use this as a space station. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the episode. I wonder if I'll get this out in time before uh, SpaceX tries to return the Falcon 9 for real on December 22nd, which will be tomorrow, uh, about 12 hours from now, I think. No, actually more than that, about 15 hours. Anyway, uh, they're going to be attempting to land back at Cape Canaveral, which I think will be a lot easier than landing on a barge. So... I'll bet that they uh, do it and actually make history, and that would be really, really cool to watch. All right, well, have a good night, and um, I'm going to put up one or two more of those boosters, maybe, probably one more, and then I'll go ahead and launch the first payload, which will be um, a, a probe towards uh, Jewel. And that's already built, so it should be able to happen pretty quickly. Oh, and always remember, fly with confidence. <laughs>